Hi everyone, it's been a while and I even got a new haircut, hope it's not too bad. Um, anyway, today I'd like to talk about one question that I have been often asked since I moved to Germany, which is where in China I'm from. So I'd answer, um, I'm from Qingdao and people will be like, uh, sorry, what is that? Um, you know what, because my hometown has a lot of German influence and it's a 9 million population big city in China, so I would assume many German know about that. Uh, but maybe it's not true. To find out uh, how the city of Asians really is here, I printed out four pictures of my hometown and then went out the street in Cologne and asked people. So this is what happened. Deutschland. And München. Österreich oder Eugen. Eigentlich. Ich Italien gesagt, auf jeden Fall. Spanien vielleicht. Griechenland aus. Ich habe keine Ahnung. Das ist schwierig, also. <lacht> totally heartbroken. Among about 30 people I interviewed on the street, none of them has even heard about my city. So I figured maybe because of the education, and then I went to the bookstore and trying to find their history textbook. It's so shocking to see there is very little about Asian in their books. They only talked about the Mongolian king and that's pretty much it. There's only one sentence I found has something to do with my hometown is in this book and it basically said China was an example of informal rule back that time. For example, Germany is Zhaozhou. Zhaozhou is the Bay Area where Qingdao is located and that's it, nothing else. And now I really feel the responsibility to promote my city a little bit. Um, so today I'd like to talk about seven facts about my city, mostly the German influence, and I hope you enjoy that. First, history. Let's talk about what exactly happened. Uh, so Qingdao used to be a tiny fishing village until German came back in the late 19th century when Germany finally stepped into this imperialism game with other Western powers. So they sent a lot of geographers and expert um, you know, army leaders to China and they find out that Zhaozhou Bay area in Shandong province is a very nice place to be um, a navy base. Uh, because the location is great, it's close to Korea and also Japan, it's right in the middle between Beijing and Shanghai. And they also find uh, natural resources including gold and oil. Um, they also find the people there are much stronger and taller. For example, I'm 167 centimeter, which is actually below the average height in my province. Um, so anyway, um, they always wanted to take um, this area, but they didn't find an excuse until 1897 when two German Catholic priests were killed by locals, which led to China uh, signing a treaty with German uh, and allowed German to lease the Zhaozhou Bay area for 99 years. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Yes, because British did the same thing to Hong Kong, but Hong Kong was returned, you know, in 1997. Uh, but anyway, so German also had a big ambition that time. They wanted to build an even better city than Hong Kong with all the resources available over there, as I mentioned before. And they did. They invested over a hundred million dollars, which is huge back that time. They built train stations, they built the factories, the banks, universities, and a lot of infrastructure. And the population grew from 83,000 to 200,000 in just 15 years. And that area has the highest education rate in the entire China. Wow, how cool is that? But then 1914, uh, the, the First World War broke out. So German became so occupied in the wars in Europe and cannot really take too much care in Asia. Then Japan occupied my city at that time until 1922, it was returned to China. But then the, war, the World War II happened, Japan occupied my city again until 1940 fight when Japan lost the war. But to sum it up, my city was colonized by German from uh, 1897 to 1914. Even though the colonization period is not that long, the influence is huge. One thing that I find very interesting is language. 
Uh, so in my dialect, we actually have some words that are from German. For example, in my hometown, we call girls Damen, which is from the Damen in German. Um, and we also call mantle cover as a guli, which also the same in German. And also the sandal shoes, we call it sandal, um, which is also a German word. Um, another word that is very cool is a, a beer. So, you know, before German came, there was no such a thing in China and people had no idea, you know, how to call that until Qingdao people invented this word. Uh, we call it P. Uh, so this P, this word is actually a translation from beer in German. Talking about beer, we're just like Germans who take beer so importantly in our life. And this culture can date back again to the colonization period when in 1903, German built China's first beer brewery in my hometown. And they also imported, you know, German equipment and the Heinhardt Geburt technology, which allow us to taste this refreshing drink, which we really like. Um, and nowadays, this brewery grew into one of the largest beer brands in the world, which is Qingdao Beer. Uh, and it's also the number one best-selling Chinese beer in the United States. That actually makes sense, because, um, you know, when I was living in the U.S., I know a lot of American people actually know about my city um, because of the beer, I guess. But in Germany, they have so many kinds of beer and they don't pay attention to a Chinese beer. That's probably why my hometown is not that well known. But anyway, so beer is so important in Qingdao. We even have International Beer Festival every August. And it's even bigger than Oktoberfest in Munich, and it's the largest beer festival in Asia. In 2011, 3 million people came to the festival consuming 700 pounds of beer. Wow, that sounds incredible. You also need to see how the local people buy beer in Qingdao. We use plastic bag. Yeah, I'm not kidding. So basically, all the corner store or convenience store, they have those big cags which contains the beer freshly brewed out of the brewery and then they pour the beer into the plastic bag and you drink it right away it's so refreshing definitely the best thing in the summertime and we also have beer museum beer street and a lot of pubs and um, we call it the beer house um, you definitely need to try that talking about food we eat a lot of seafood thanks to the Yellow Sea. And beside that, we also eat sausages, yes. And there's a company in Qingdao, which is called Bernia, and they claim to preserve the German technique of making sausage pretty well. Um, it does taste a bit different though, because they use um, some garlic in the sausage, but uh, it's still pretty tasty. And also, we don't eat rice that often, as a lot of Chinese people do. Um, we eat steamed bread which kind of like the damp noodle in Deutschland, um, but they come into different flavors and you can find the savory ones, you can also find the sweet ones. Um, and also there's a plain ones, which is actually the staple food for us. Every year, 80 million tourists come to Qingdao thanks to the beautiful beach and German architecture, which is quite exotic to many Chinese people. Some of the most popular sites include Jiaozhou Governance Hall, which was used as our city hall 20 years ago, and the Governance Residence, which is a beautiful mansion combining German architecture style and Asian decorations. And now it is a museum and you can go there and explore the early history of Qingdao. We also have St. Michael's Cathedral, which is the favorite place for the local people to take wedding pictures. And every time you go there, you see the girls, dressed in the beautiful wedding gown and taking lovely pictures, which is simply gorgeous. We also have a Protestant church, Bismarck Barracks, Jiaozhou Imperial Courthouse, the lighthouse on Xiaqingdao Island, among many others. Even our train station was built by German. Um, it got expanded a few years ago, but still preserved the German style very well. And actually, my city had this regulation that all the architecture built around that on the old part of Qingdao uh, need to have a red roof. Um, it's kind of like the Southern Germany style, I guess. Uh, it's just a way to, you know, continue this culture and style, which we really appreciate and I actually are proud of.
When I talked about history, I mentioned the education rate was pretty high during Germany's governance, and they did put a lot of effort. So in 1909, um, the University of Hamburg partnered with the Chinese government and built a college in Qingdao, which is called German Chinese College. And now, after so many years of development and upside down, it is split into four parts. And one part becomes Tongji University in Shanghai, which is the, one of the best universities in China, and they have so many partnership programs with Germany. And the other part becomes Shandong University, which is also a, a very good one. I would say it's in top 20 in China. And they also have a very good German program, and a lot of students study German over there. And then the third part becomes Qingdao University, you know, which is the biggest local university in my city. Um, the medical department of German Chinese College become the Qingdao Medical College, which is also a very popular one in Qingdao because they have um, pretty good um, nursery programs. Germany also plays a quite big role in the economic development of Qingdao. As I mentioned before, the Qingdao Beer Brewery is definitely one of the biggest taxpayers in the city, um, as well as the tourism. Uh, and then there's another brand which is also quite well known, is Haier. It's actually the largest home appliance brand in the world. But a few years back, it actually partnered with Lieberherr in Germany. The logo back that time is two brothers. One is a blonde boy and the other one kind of has dark skin. Uh, it actually represents the friendship between Chinese and German people and how lovely it is. And then in 2016, the largest German business platform in China opens door in my hometown, which is called the Sino German Eco Park, covering 66 square kilometers. They're trying to build this beautiful area, attracting German businesses, a German aspect. The infrastructure there is pretty complete. There's international school and the stores. So yeah, I can see a lot of potential in it. Mm -hmm. Thanks to all of that, last year, Qingdao's economy ranked number 12 among all the cities in China with a GDP of 147 billion USD dollar. And Qingdao also has many sister cities in Germany, which are listed here. So I believe there are gonna be more and more exchanges between Qingdao and Germany. So next time when I said I'm from Qingdao, I hope you know it. And I also encourage everyone to visit my hometown. I'm sure you're gonna have a great time. If not, just call me and I guarantee it. Okay, I hope you enjoyed today's show and I will see you next time.